Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Earlier on this week, we took a look at the odd even transposition sort. And yeah, we learned that it was parallel in nature and therefore very fast. Today, we're going to actually turn our attention to sorting networks, which are a very visual, a very intuitive way of actually presenting a sorting algorithm. Since we already know how the odd even transposition sort actually works, well, today we're going to be actually using that as an example. A sorting network basically presents a sorting algorithm like it was a circuit. Essentially, it looks something like this. Now, all we have to do is we have to insert all the numbers we want to sort on the left side. And basically, they're going to move slowly towards the right. As you can see, their paths converge from time to time. And well, whenever they actually meet, a comparison is actually made. If you're sorting things in an ascending order, the smaller number goes up, the larger number goes down. So let's move back and try to properly trace this. As mentioned, this particular sorting network is the odd even transposition sort. So yeah, that is why we're actually doing these two operations at the same time. Because, well, that's how the algorithm actually works. This is your first pass where we actually compare, you know, every other pair. Swaps are made as necessary and then we move on. Now we're actually looking at the odd pairs instead, which is why, of course, the top and bottom elements are being ignored. If you recall, we do need n passes when sorting n items. Since we have 4 items here, we of course need to do 4 passes. So yeah, essentially what we've done is we've sort of turned the entire concept of the odd even sort into a circuit that numbers just have to pass through from left to right and they'll just get sorted. What's really interesting is that sorting networks can actually be used to implement any comparison sort as long as the comparison sort actually treats all data the same way. What this means of course is that we cannot do this for something like say quick sort, which of course does a lot of different things depending on the data it gets. Another good example of a sorting algorithm that works with a sorting network is bubble sort. As you can see, we're no longer doing things in parallel but you can actually see the pattern of big numbers being bubbled downwards while small numbers float up slowly. In fact, let's feed it with the worst case input. This is inversely sorted data. As you can see at every step, things are getting put right in the exact same way that bubble sort does this. Of course, a sorting network does have its drawbacks. Firstly, as mentioned earlier, well, you cannot really model every single sorting algorithm using this technique. And second, as you may have noticed, the number of inputs are fixed. The sorting networks you've seen just now work for exactly 4 items. If you have more than 4 items, you will need to construct a new network that takes that item into account. Despite these drawbacks, however, there are also some huge advantages using this method. I mean, firstly, if you're actually making a, you know, a hardware circuit that is supposed to perform sorting, you could really do it like this instead of having to implement something more complex that runs an actual algorithm. Another great advantage of this method is how visual it is, making it extremely intuitive. I've seen activities for, say, kids, you know, when you're teaching them sorting algorithms, where a sorting network is actually printed out on the ground on a large sheet, and the kids actually stand on top of it and, you know, do the sorting. Every time they meet, they may have to swap positions. And I think this is a very intuitive and fun way to learn about sorting algorithms. Of course, going beyond that, it is also just a very useful visualization tool. So yeah, that was sorting networks. And that's basically it for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of all the other episodes of Friday Minis. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.